Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm taking a look at a cheap spot welder to spot weld 18650 batteries. You know with the sub 250 gram weight class FPV planes out there, there's a real opportunity to use these 18650 Lion batteries for a power supply in these airplanes. And you can get them pretty cheap. One battery is $4.99 and they're fairly lightweight. So I decided I wanted to put together a 3S2P pack for my Nano Talon. And my original plan was to use a 3D printed compression tray that I designed. So I designed in the traces for the nickel strips down at the bottom. And my plan was to print two of these, put one on top of the other, and use zip ties to compress it together. After thinking about it, I decided I didn't want to rely strictly on compression. So for that reason, I got myself a little spot welder and I want to try that out. I've done it before with soldering, but a lot of people left feedback that that's not a great way to go. Personally, I don't mind it too much, but if I'm going to get into assembling bigger packs like 3S2P or 4S2P, I really do think a better option is to use a spot welder. So for that reason, I did a little searching and I found this guy. It can be found all over the place. I'll put an affiliate link in the description if you want to get one for yourself. But this video is not about the battery itself, it's about the spot welder. So I want to talk a little bit about what I've done with this spot welder based on research with YouTube. The first thing I want to show you is that they give you these really long battery leads and they're meant to clamp on to the power source that you want to use. So the first thing I did was chop them and connected them directly to the terminals that are provided and I'm using an XT60 connector. Now I know some of you are going to say, but wait a minute, John, an XT60 is only rated for 60 amps, this needs 120. It's such a short micro burst of current, it's not going to matter. This connector will hold up to it, no problem. The next thing you might notice is that on the left hand side there are two terminals, a negative and a positive. Those are for the welding pens. If we look at the electrical connections on the board though, I'll show you that there's continuity right there. So there's continuity without any interaction from the control circuit itself. So there's no reason to take your positive lead and connect it all the way over here because you've got this entire trace of resistance that really is just not very good solder. So that resistance reduces the amount of current that gets to your battery. There's just no reason not to connect the positive pen on the input terminal where your battery comes into the unit. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. The next thing I want to point out is the solder trace on the negative side because I am going to flow current there. When I got it, that trace was really kind of flat like this. It just did not look very good. So I shored it up with my own solder. I just kind of reflowed more solder on top of it to give it a little bit more material to flow. One last little mod I found on YouTube, and I'll post a link to the guy's video in the description, is to add this capacitor between the diode and this ground right here. The reason to do that is because when the current flows, it's possible if your voltage is too low on the battery that you undervolt the control circuit. That causes the MOSFETs to not fully saturate during the trigger and they wind up blowing and causing a fire. So by adding this little capacitor with the negative lead right there and the positive lead right there on the diode, it keeps the control circuit voltage high during the discharge. Must be a known issue because in my kit, I got two spare MOSFETs. So I've seen these MOSFETs blow. I haven't tried mine yet. You're about to see it live for the first time. So I'm gonna put this back together and let's give it a run. You might notice there's a parallel connection on my XT60 over here. The reason I did that is because they say a material thickness of 0.1 to 0.12 millimeter requires a working current of 120 to 180 amps. I'm using a 3 cell 2200 milliamp hour with a 35 to 70 C discharge rate, which gives me up to 154 amps. So what I'm going to do is set the pulse timer on the spot welder at low value and work my way up and see how it works. If I feel I need more amperage, I'll connect another battery in parallel. All right, I've connected my battery and the initial power output is set for a 10 millisecond pulse and the weld way or the weld method is automatic, which means you just connect the two terminals to the metal and it should give me a burst. And there we go, nice little burst. Not bad, that's not bad. Let's increase it to let's try 15. All right, there's a burst of 15. So far, no smoke coming out of my unit, which is more than I can say from for some YouTube videos. 
All right, 15 did okay, but not enough, so I'm going to increase it again. This time we'll try 20. Another thing that I've noticed is some guys start on 80 and they like burn right through the tin, right through the nickel. Okay, that was with 20. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, that's bound. I mean, that's pretty good. I can't pull it apart by hand. I'm gonna go ahead and try 25. And there's 25, that one came loose. I don't think I did a very good job of holding pressure down on that, so let's try that one again. Okay, there's a look at 25 again. Still comes, that still comes loose. This one, did, yeah, that one came loose too. All right, let's move it up a little bit. Let's turn up the heat. All right, there's 30. Still pull it apart at 30, so I want to go a little higher. Let's just jump right to 40. I'm tired of playing around with this. Let's get it. So there's 40. All right, now we're hitting it with some juice. That was a pretty good one. Yeah, that's it. That's the number. That's on there. All right, that looks good. I want to try 40 a couple more times. And then I want to try it on a battery. Shit. Oof. Yeah, that was a pop, man. That went right through there. So 40, that's a little too much, I think. Looks like I crossed the line. I wonder, yeah, well, maybe it was because it was half off the terminal. So I think we'll decrease this a little bit. That was a little much. So 35, let's try that. <laughs> 40 was quite the pop. <laughs> All right. Yep, I think 35, that looks to me like that's the number. That gives a pretty good solid weld on the back side of it. And it takes a real effort to pull that off and it's tearing the material when I do. So I think 35 might be the number. Let's give it one more zap. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. I feel like two good, two good contacts on that strip at 35, that feels pretty solid. So I'm gonna go with that, but before I go any further, I do wanna take a look at the battery and see what's going on with the battery health. All right, I started at 4.2 volts for cell, and after that number of discharges, it's at 4.16 volts per cell, so not much. All right, I'm pretty content with that, so I'm gonna put the lid back on, and then I wanna try doing a couple welds on a battery. My plan is to make a 3S2P pack, so I'll need to spot weld three of these 18650s in series, starting with positive to negative, and then positive to negative after I flip it over. That doesn't look like a very good one. Yeah, it's actually holding on there pretty well. I can't complain about it. All right, let's weld the negative side. Feels pretty good. I, I really can't have any, I really don't have anything to complain about. It seems like that's on there. Fairly secure. There we go, 6.9 volts, so that looks good. Hey, you know what's funny is they don't even have a, like a product label for this. It's just the cheap 18650 spot welder. Again, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in one of these. 
from what I can tell, it seems to work okay. I didn't set anything on fire, didn't let any magic smoke out, and I've got some pretty good spot welds on these 18650s. So now I got a path forward to make my own customized battery packs for my planes, which is really kind of cool. Well, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know new material hits the channel. Check out my affiliate links in the description for more information. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. You know, with these low amp draw battery, you know, with these low amp draw aircraft out there like the Dart, there's a real opportunity to use these lithium ion. You know, with the real low amp draw batteries out there, you know, with the real low amp draw airplanes out there like the Sub 250 class, Dart 250. Dude. You know, with the real low amp draw small airplanes out there, there's a real opportunity to use these 1860. My gosh. You know what the sub 250 weight gram, weight gram?